And welcome back with unemployment numbers at their highest level in decades. This is certainly not the best time to be looking for work. Even people who have jobs are fearing the very worst. So we've brought together a panel of people with questions for our early show financial contributor, Vera Gibbons. Welcome, Vera. Hello. Good to have you nice with us. Nice to be here. Now we have Vanessa, we have Michael, and we have Orit here to, uh, I guess, give us their stories and a little background. Vanessa, you're 30 years old. You worked in the financial sector. Currently out of work right now. What are you looking to do? What type of maybe change in direction are you willing to take at this point? Well, at this point, I've come from the financial sector. I've been in there for the past 10 years, coming out of grad school, and started thinking of rebranding myself and saying, hey, maybe nonprofit, maybe healthcare, um, anything right now to kind of like steer away from the financial markets that's been tumbling. Now, she felt basically that she was a dime a dozen in her, her, right. her, her former position. So now it's, you've got to kind of rebrand. What, I know. What's the that's the thing. I mean, you're right. We've had 260,000 job losses in the financial sector last year. So I think rebranding yourself is a very good idea. People in your situation are transferring their skills to entirely different industries, moving into healthcare, moving into government, moving into accounting, auditing. These types of areas are actually hiring. Does that interest you, though, to have to, to change course like this? Um, not necessarily, but at this way that the tone is going, that I'm going to have to do this, and I have been doing so. You know, you've also found that with some, I, I guess, jobs that you've applied for, they've told you you're overqualified. That's correct, it, that I'm overqualified for a lot of the jobs. So would you <laughs> recommend maybe, I hate to say, but dumbing down the resume a little bit? I wouldn't, re it down? No, I wouldn't recommend that you do that. I mean, your resume is your big marketing tool. You want to promote yourself, toot your horn, show your accomplishments, show your results. So I wouldn't necessarily downplay the resume, but I would sort of tailor it to suit each employer's needs. So find out exactly what they need, tailor your resume. It is very competitive out there. You've got over three people vying for each position that yeah. works even more in your industry. Exactly. So you really have to show them what you bring to the table, why you're different from other candidates. All right, Michael, let's talk about your situation right now. You owned a small business, yes. out of work right now, had to close the business. That was a deli, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, so now what? what? What would be your next course? Well, of I would like a managerial position, whether it's with another food type of business. Um, I, I enjoy overseeing, telling people what to do, and I just like gener generally like organizing and telling people uh, what they should do, where they should be, and I, I'm an organized person. Yeah. He has so. the skills, he has the experience, he has everything that you need. So moving into this managerial position, I would think, would be relatively easy. now. Michael has spent a lot of time online trying to find a job on yeah. Craigslist and some of the other. Yes. So here's my advice on, on that front. You don't want to just do the online searches. I mean, statistics show that only 15 to 20 percent of jobs are advertised in any kind of public medium. Five percent of job seekers actually get a job through a job posting or through online. So I think my best advice for you would be to get out there and do some more networking. C certainly have a lot of contacts in your industry, mm -hmm. but. You want to hit the ground running, get out there, talk to as many people as possible. And I would also suggest the digital networking, yeah. like LinkedIn, Facebook, these types of outlets right. would be a good resource for you what's as well. Been the most, what's been the most frustrating thing for you so far, though? The most frustrating is the fact when I do go online, yeah. send out resumes, none of the companies respond to your resumes. So it's the lack it's of very, response. Well, maybe it's very resume. basically because the market's flooded? Uh, well, maybe your resume is not popping off the page. You have to use buzzwords. Again, you have to go, like I said to Vanessa, show your accomplishments, show results, show that you increase sales at your daily by X percent, profits by X percent. This is right. the kind of stuff that prospective employers like to see. Okay. So maybe it wouldn't be worth talking to somebody who specializes in resumes to get some punch exactly. words in there, make this thing really right. stand make out a little bit pop. more. Okay. Employers only spend like 10 to 15 seconds looking at these resumes. Okay. Right. So. Ori, let's talk to you right now. Um, you are currently with a job. You haven't been laid off yet, but you, you do fear that there could potentially be some volatility in your industry. Give me a little background as to what you're looking well, at. Well, um, I work in, in law and there have been several layoffs lately, thousands of layoffs, and I think it's always a concern given the current market. And I would just like to be in a position where I can set aside some savings in the event that I do become the next victim ah, of, you're of thinking the fragile ahead. market. Yeah, that's, that's just it. And I guess that's the, you know, to try to kind of beat, beat it to the punch, right. so to speak. You here, hate to think that you're going to potentially be out of work, but you've got to prepare. Well, you should prepare. I mean, layoffs are on the rise. The unemployment yeah. rate is expected to continue to rise. And you're in the same boat that a lot of people are. One in three workers are fear, fearful about job security, worried they might lose their job. So you do want to go ahead and set up an emergency fund, put that money in a basic money market account. You should have six Six months, ideally, in a an emergency fund. Do you have anything set aside? I do, I do, but definitely not six months worth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you need to actually go ahead and do that because otherwise, then you're tapping into your 401k, you're maxing yeah. out the credit card if something does happen to you. So, 
take a look at the money that's coming in the door, going out the door, and find ways to cut in different categories, travel, entertainment, dining out, wherever you can actually make those cuts, yeah. make them. I don't put you on the spot here for a second, but we've got about, uh, about 40 seconds left. If you could give a bullet point, just one thing for each person to take away, Vera, what would it be? For Vanessa, I'd say, again, sell yourself, sell your skills, sell your accomplishments. For Michael, I would say, confidence. Get the confidence back. Get out there. Get out there and network, particularly. Don't spend so much time online, necessarily. Okay. That should be supplemental to your job search, but not your primary means of getting a job. And for you, get that emergency fund up and running. Again, it is critical that you actually have that. That will alleviate some of the anxiety if you, unfortunately, do lose your job. All right, gang. Take that advice to heart. All right, she knows what she's talking about. Uh, Mary Gibbons, <laughs> Thanks, thank Chris. you very much. Yeah, we do appreciate you. it. Great to see you as always. Vanessa Cherry, this is Michael Pernick and Orit Blankrod. Thank you, the three of you, and for coming luck. in this morning. We do appreciate yeah. it. And, and good luck, too. We know it's not easy out there, but uh, we wish you the very best. Keep us up to date on how things right. go, okay? Thank you.